just to die here. Yasu, fellow monkeys, welcome back to the channel. It's time to continue the conditioning series I started last week and since the method of showing some climbing footage as a background to my speech resonated quite well with you guys, I thought I'll do it this time again. As you saw in the intro, the weather is not the prettiest at the moment and it rained a lot recently. And so we decided to go for a sector which is not only protected from the rain but also stays dry long term which means no water from above, no wet rock whatsoever. And you know, all those tufas are there for a reason, namely water which runs easily through the rock dripping from the overhangs after some greater precipitation, which causes even huge roofs like that of the twin caves to resemble essentially a waterfall right now, as you might have seen in my most recent uncut ascent. But there happens to be one sector which appears to stay dry no matter what and this crag is called Hada. It features massive orange overhangs which harbor not so many but a wide spectrum of routes. From quite easy to super hard and even projects. And already the approach is quite an adventure as you will see. Alright, enough background info, let's jump into the actual topic of the video. In the previous conditioning episode I said that under certain preconditions there are four important factors which will influence your performance on any given day. Body weight, mental sharpness, restedness and special substances. And in this episode I want to elaborate a little bit about mental sharpness. Getting brain and whole nervous system to work for you instead of against you might in some cases be at least as important as the factor of body weight. This depends of course also on the personal weaknesses of the climber we are talking about. And the first tip that I have for you, and this one works really well for me, try to run on carbs as much as possible on the critical day. Sounds a bit strange, I know, but what I mean essentially is keep the fats out of your system during the time of desired peak performance. Amongst the two major energy sources, our body can utilize carbs and fats. Carbohydrates seem to adopt the role of more quickly, more readily available energy while fats seem to adopt the role of more slowly available energy, serving as an attenuator of short-term shortages in carbohydrate supply. Fats are also much slower when it comes to digestion and assimilation. First they have to pass your lymphatic system to get into your bloodstream from where they get slowly picked up by the target cells after floating around a bit. This is why you'll never hear about a fat spike but often heard from a blood sugar spike. And speaking from my experience, I can feel how my whole body literally slows down after a heavy fat meal, as if the fats induced kind of a lethargic mood or something like that. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Long story short, this is something that you definitely don't want as a climber who wants to send his project. I don't know, maybe as a cyclist who's got 300 kilometers at low speed in front of him, this kind of mood, this kind of energy might be desirable, but as a climber you want to be as sharp-minded as possible, with energy as quickly available and explosive as possible. There's absolutely no room for any brain fog whatsoever. And I think that in the same way as your muscles work quicker and more in a strength than in an endurance mode on carbs, also your central nervous system will be sharper and more ready on carbs than on fats. And by the way, the brain runs basically on simple carbs only. That was a lot of pseudoscience to digest, I know, so let's jump to the conclusion. If you want to get the most out of your conscious apparatus, your mind and your muscles, run as much on carbs as possible. Do not smash in a high fat meal on the day before the critical day and especially not on the critical day itself. Don't just believe what I say, try it yourself. Do the experiment. 1000 calories of fats versus 1000 calories of carbs. Wait 3 hours and start your training. Trust me, you'll notice the difference. I have to add here that this also might depend on what diet your metabolism is adapted to. I'm a high carber basically all the time, so it could well be that I get hit harder by a high fat meal than someone else. The second tip I have for you has something to do with nutrition as well, namely do not overdo it with your breakfast. We've talked about this already in the last episode, go for something that contains easily digestible carbohydrates, simple sugars, ideally some fruit, 
which has the additional benefit of hydrating your body at the same time. In resting mode, the two big energy demanding systems of your body are your central nervous system, especially your brain, and your digestive system with all its intestines, stomach and whatnot. These two permanently compete with each other for blood supply. And everyone knows, if you smash in a big meal, you might as well take a nap right afterwards because your concentration will suck. This is because all the blood gets pulled into the digestive system for production of digestive enzymes and juices and also for taking up nutrients. There's only few blood left to nourish the brain during that time. And this is something you definitely don't want as a climber who wants to send hard, because not only your brain has to be adequately supplied, but also your muscles, which means that you've got now three competitors if you smash it in big time. So start your day with an easily digestible meal, start your session early and keep it easily digestible throughout the attempts with a banana or two. No problem, because you've got your big post-workout meal pre-cooked waiting in your backpack. So these are in my opinion two very important influencers of mental sharpness and they both can be quickly optimized by simply adjusting your diet a bit. And since there's a lot more to say about mental sharpness, but this talk got quite long already, I will cut it off here and continue with the topic of mental sharpness with mental sharpness in the next conditioning episode. As always, I hope you've got something from the tips and you enjoyed the footage. If you did, please drop some likes and opinions. It helps a lot. Thank you guys for your attention and I'll see you next time. Bye.